So, at this point the reveal of Prism has been out for about a week or two. And I've been doing a little thinking of what I'm going to run initially. Well, first for the initial launch of the final shape. And eventually what I want to build into. After we get all settled and get everything uh, unlocked. Including the new exotic class item. Which we still have to see what the roles in that thing exactly are. But from what's released or what's been broken down from the gameplay trailer. We can speculate a wee bit more. So we're just going to start off with what I want to eventually build into. When everything's unlocked. For the super it's going to be Shadow Shot Deadfall. Pretty self explanatory. Good for Adkli. It can debuff our boss quite a bit. It can keep me safe from everything around it. Gambler's Dodge, because this is basically going to be a melee spam build. More or less, going to give Titans run for their money. Going to have Triple Jump, because of course, the first ability that I'm going to pick is Combination Blow. Mainly because I w I'm curious to see if the bonus melee damage granted by Combination Blow would affect the Grapple Melee as well. So you run in, you dodge a wee bit. You dodge melee, dodge melee, get your combination st blow stacks running up. And then for media target, you can go ahead and hit it with a grapple melee. Maybe if you're skilled a little bit or if you're a, a strand titan, you can also pair it with a 1-2 punch shotgun and a navigator as well to throw up your own little grapple point and go ham. That's if A, the combination blow damage damage bonus is the same as what it is now if unless it either a gets nerfed for both arc and prismatic or if the prismatic damage bonus will be less than arc and that also counts if it, the melee damage is also going to work for the grapple melee as well so i did do a little damage number testing when it comes to combination blow and grapple grenades I got these damage numbers from the Aphelion's Rest Lost Sector down in the Dreaming City. Just in a control, not the not any legend or monster lost sectors or anything. But the normal melee hit for 5977 damage. And the grapple melee, for whatever reason, hit twenty hit for twenty five thousand eight hundred and twenty. But there was two damage numbers, not one. I'm not sure if one counts as a powered melee and the other one counts as a grenade hit. But it is what it is and that's what popped up. So the combination blow damage numbers at times 3. Because what's the point of getting damage numbers for combination blow times 1 and times 2? Was well, a good old 24,481. And that was both for uncharged and charged melees while combination blow times 3 was active. So after getting all of those numbers, if you break down the damage bonus granted by both the grapple melee and the combination blow, it turns out to be roughly 4 times base melee. Uh, for the combination blow it was closer to 4, for the grapple melee it was closer to 4.3 times damage. But if you were to multiply them together the bonus damage from combination blow and the bonus damage from the grapple melee you would hit what number did i pull out of my ass yeah i think around 17 times more than the base damage that is not including things like spirit of the synthoseps with the new exotic class item that's gonna come or with one two punch with no surges or anything that's just the base melee is multiplied together if the damage numbers do remain the same. So of course the number can get much higher if you include things like the 1-2 punch. And you can do it repeatedly with Navigator as well. And then you also got the Spirit of the Synthoseps as well. We already mentioned all that. Oh yeah, another little cherry on top is you could do this with a Strand Titan as well. And get their banner of war buff going too. Because that's the only thing with this build that's going to be a bit iffy. And that's survivability when it comes to single target damage. Which I hope. That's what the spirit 
of the Lies handshake will be for the exotic class item. Because that is speculated to be a thing. Going off a Reddit post saying what's the potential roles for it. So if we if it if the spirit of the Lies handshake inherits some health on me, on powered melee hits, that'd be real nice to pair with the spirit of the synthoseps for bonus melee damage when surrounded. So that'd be ideal for single target damage. But for general ad clear, general play, I'd rather have at the very least, Spirit of the Calibans, so powered melee attacks cause enemies to ignite. Basically getting that one arc fragment back into the rotation of things. Wait, what was it again? Yeah, getting Lethal Current back. Because we won't be having any of this with Prismatic, we won't get any of the bonus ad clear from jolting and exploding targets. So we need a little something to fill it in. And ignited, igniting enemies on powered melee would do definitely that. But number one is going to work with the grapple melee. Number two is going to work with the combination blow. And number three. It's got to pair very nicely with some of the fragments that, I'm, that I've selected. And yeah, that's all the abilities and the potential synergy. So now with the fragments that I'm looking at running. Even though it is speculated that there's going to be more than what I showed in that little blog post. But for the time being, I am looking to run faster of balance. And it says rapidly defeating targets with a light damage. Grants melee energy. And rapidly defeating targets with dark damage. Grants melee, grants grenade energy. So since I'm running a dark grenade technically. And a light melee. They're both... The tech, they're both feeding to each other. The grapple melee will get me more grapple energy. And my combination blue energy doesn't matter since I have gambler's dodge. That's that's uh, taken into consideration if combination blow gives grants me full class ability energy on the uh, powered melee defeats. If not, then I'm gonna have to revise a lot of things when prismatic finally drops. The next fragment will be. Facet of Dawn, which is what luckily we're going to start with. A Facet of Dawn says, Powered melee hits against targets make you radiant, and powered melee final blows make both you and nearby allies radiant. Obviously, we a hunter, we're going to be a little selfish and we're mainly in it for the first part, making ourselves radiant, which will be a nice little damage buff, as well as giving us some anti barrier capabilities. Basically all the time since this build is centered around melees. The next meme is got to be faster of protection. While surrounded by enemies you are more resistant to incoming damage. Easy, self-explanatory, survivability. And for the next two, faster of purpose. Picking up an orb of power grants either amplified restoration, false stammer, or even mail. Or an overshield based on the damage type of my super. And since I'm planning to run the Dead for Tether, it's going to grant me some overshields. It might synergize pretty well with running, what is it? Not recuperation, but better already. Since with an overshield, your health won't be taking any damage. So your health can regen as this overshot takes damage instead. So that might be the play, if not, simple recuperation. That also works out pretty well. If we can run 5 fragments, then the next fragment will be... Facet of Ruin. Increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target. And increases the size of solar ignitions. Here's got to be the sweet little thing about this uh, fragment. Is that if you want condition of finality, it's got to double, it's got to dip into both aspects of it. Your shadow has got to do more damage and a bigger AOE. And your solar ignition is going to have a bigger boom too. And for the solar ignition part, part and for the solar ignition part, it's got to feed in pretty perfectly to the spirit of the Caliban's hands, which will help it add clear quite a bit. 
Now I just realized I didn't mention anything about the aspects that I'm gonna run. I'll go, I'll get, I'll circle back to that after I get over the last two fragments. Which will either be Facet of Hope. While you have an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. Which will be the Overshield. It won't exactly be too helpful, but hey, it's good to have in case I mess up the dodge. Or, I'm, or I'll run Facet of Justice. While Transcendent, your ability to final blows explodes. That's a little more ad clear when, when I decide to go Sicko mode and become Transcendent. Now circling back to the damn aspects because I forgot to mention them. But the obvious pick will be a Winter Shroud. Each and every dodge would radiate a slowing blast around you. Now unfortu unfortunately or unfortunately, depends who you ask, this doesn't work with Radiant Dance Machines. Because I do not want to go up against a Hunter with Radiant Dance Machines and Winter Shroud in PvP. You can easily get 6 or 7 dodges off and that means easy freezes after a few dodges. And that will be a complete ass to go up against. It'll be insane for PvE. Because you can just constantly freeze everything. But PvP, no. That'll be way too overpowered. If Combination Blow does indeed give us back all of our class ability energy. Then we can proc Winter Shroud on each and every dodge. Which means A. The enemies around us will be slowed. B. They probably won't use that, uh, any of the teleport abilities. And C. Once we dodge 3 to 4 times near a, a single enemy, they'll be frozen. Which dips back into Facet of Ruin. Yeah, dips back into fa Facet of Ruin. And the other aspect. I'm torn because there's nothing really too good. Like everything has obvious synergy, then there's nothing else afterwards. Maybe I can go for Ascension, get Amplified. I think Ascension gives you a second class ability, class ability charge, so you have two instead of one. That might be a, that might be the play. Gum powder gamble. Nah, it takes up the slot of your of your grenades, and I kind of have to get you have to kind of get used to that. You have to look before you press your grenade ability to see if you have it or not. So it's a little annoying. I have contemplated the threat spectre just to absolutely litter everything with decoys. But everything is going to be, around is going to be slowed anyways. So is that, is the respect that really going to be too useful? And then finally we've got Stylus Executioner. Which might be good for medium to higher end stuff. But at that point this build probably won't be good for that. Since it will be squishy and it's a high risk high reward build. But still I will try out Stylus Executioner with the build when I get it. But I'll probably be leaning more towards Ascension more than anything else. And for all the mods for this build, I already got the fit going already, but ignore the class item. Because it's going to be replaced by the exotic. But yeah, just going over the stats real quick. Medium mobility. It's going to be covered by combination blows regen, so mobility doesn't matter too much. Unless you mess up and it drops. High resilience should be 100, but we'll see how it goes at 9 resilience. A 90 resilience. 70 recovery just in case something messes up and need to hide for a little. Of course nearly max discipline because grenade go burr. And we don't really care for these two. Since dodge. And we don't really care too much about supers. A super regen. For the weapons I have no idea just yet. Obviously conditional finality for the, for the kinetic slot. And for the energy slot I'm not too sure. But Bloodline is an option for Devourer and more Grenade region. Man, I don't know, we'll see. Could go Summoner. Could go Recluse. Could, could go something new and shiny. And Heavy? I don't know, whatever's metal, I guess. As for the mods. I don't know what I was thinking putting up Dynamo beforehand to save it to Dim. I'll probably just Special Ammo Finder. We don't need anything too special in here. But here's where the fun things start. 
to impact inductions because it'll reduce our grenade cooldown no matter what melee we do either combination blow or grapple and heavy handed to make to make orbs of power each and every time something dies with powered melee which should be very often so there should be a lot of them dropping around chest armor nothing special as well generic resists for the boots the holster and the scavenger just depends on what weapons I'm going to run so that doesn't really matter too much but recuperation for a bit of extra survivability while running around and for class item pretty obvious going double bomber and a going double powerful attraction and a single bomber for pick up orb radius and for more grenades so that's pretty self explanatory other exotics that could be used instead oops wrong one if you decide to go golden gun marksman then celestial nighthawk's good worm hush crown might be decent as well but who runs that in pve Assassin's Cow, the usual pick. A lot of melees going out, a lot of invisibility, and a lot of health regen. What else? What else? Oh yeah, Lies Handshake might be uh, might be a decent pick, but we need to see if it works with the grapple melee, or if it only will work with the combination blow, or if they'll even allow it to work with the prismatic to begin with. Because they might keep it locked to only arc subclasses. And if that is the case, that'd be pretty shitty. That'd be pretty awful indeed. Now we'll see what they decide to do. Now uh, what else, what else, what else? More dodges, that'd be pretty funny. Star Eater? Nah, wouldn't really work for dead for now, wouldn't it? Frosties is a decent pick. Oddly enough, you can get Orpheus Rig to spam the Quiver. Once again, if they allow that to work with Prismatic. But what I had initially been considering is running Bombardiers. Because every dodge should be proccing Winter Shroud and should be proccing Bombardiers as well. But I did play with it a little bit using an Arc build and the grenade just a little too slow for my liking. But it might be better with Winter Shroud in the mix, chilling everything. And slowing them down quite a bit. We also need to see how exotics like this even work with prismatic. Because if you look at the description now, it depends the explosive damage depends what subclass you're running. Arc blinds, solar scorchers, void suppressors, stasis slows, and strand severs. Exotics like this could turn into or could function the same way Fassa of Purpose does where it depends on the damage of your super rather than what subclass you're on so if that does end up being the case then maybe Void isn't exactly the best of ideas since there's a lot better things rather than than, suppress, than suppression Severin could be nice to increase the survivability we could slow enemies even further Suppression might be good, but there's also blinds which makes enemies stop attacking you altogether. And then you got scorchers for a wee bit of extra ad clear and bit of, bit of better cleanup. So that's all possible when it comes to bombardiers. But I'm going to be mainly gunning for the exotic class item when we discover how to get it and what was it's going to get. Now. A second build I threw together today for a scenario of gun to my head. I can't pick the combination blow build, I have to pick something else. I threw together Silence and Squall, the Stasis Super, Gambit as Dodge, Triple Jump, both pretty staple. But Threaded Spike, Magnetic Grenade, Gunpowder Gamble, and Ascension Fire Aspects. Main loop for this build. Throw out Threaded Spike, build a Gambler, Gunpowder Gamble and also revolve around the Magnetic Grenade as well. 
Just throw a magnetic grenade into any group because all the other grenades aren't really too great. We're just mainly using most mainly using threaded spike to build up the gunpowder gamble. And then we can run ascension as well with potentially sixth coyote. So we can go ahead, hit up ascension, make ourselves amplified, make our class abilities recharge faster. Throw that threaded spike, catch it again, dodge if need be. And just play around a powered melee ability and play around gunpowder gamble as well that's basically what i've cooked up with hunter so far unfortunately there's not as many obvious combos as i would like to see but who knows when final shape actually drops i might be pleasantly surprised and you can expect me to make quite a few more there we go can expect me to make quite a few more builds once that comes around. So hopefully final shape doesn't disappoint. But we'll just have to wait and see I guess. And I'll see you guys then.